good old uh, core tailing with me today. Actually trialing a new Akuma surf reel, which will be coming out later. I love the uh, with these Akuma reels. They've got that that quick drag system. One or two little notches and the drags sort of set. If you need it to release a bit, just one or two clicks back. You're not sort of standing there going <laughs> as the fish is running. It's actually quite a nice system that. So I'm just running my usual dropper rig that I make. It's about a meter and a half long. Swivel here down to my uh, hooks got a uh, five ounce actually gonna run a keeper little keeper today see how that goes gets in the way I'll take it off just running half pulleys eight barrow main hook a little four barrow I think for my keeper Good old magic cotton. Okay, let's get a bait out. Now I'm not going to get too wet. I don't need to. There is a little bank out in front of the little holes here. So I don't want to cast too far because otherwise I'm casting onto a flat bank that's not very deep. There's a little hole right here in front of us. Which is obviously going to be the deepest part. And there's no use, like I was saying, getting wet if you don't have to. If I was to wade out, basically I'll be standing in the hole that I want to be fishing in passing on to a bank that's shallow and the bigger waves are breaking on so basically we've got so standing here we've got a hole and then the bank that we would normally stand on the low tide and then the nice little channel that we will fish on that low tide so like I was saying you don't want to walk in the hole because that's where you basically want to be casting your bait And what we're also going to probably have is a rip because basically what it is is where the holes are and the tides high you've got water sort of coming around those flat banks in behind and they're getting dragged through that hole so gonna always have sort of that pull on your line and just remember always just leave it even if it if, even if it's sort of going like that a little bit if you think it's a bite go and hold the line and it'll tell you It'll let you know if it's actually your bite. She just had a little nibble on the on the core tare there. So now that I've seen that little nudge, I'm just gonna hold my finger basically on the line, and that's gonna let me know those bites. Out on the west coast, you get a lot of that pinging on the line from the waves. It sort of cuts across the sand sometimes and the finger on the line will always tell you if it's a bite because you can feel those pings and they're just totally different to uh, fish bites great thing is once you get down to that little bank, you only need to cast no more than maybe 40, 50 meters. You're right in that channel. If you can get to that bank. Now a lot of people are casting from here and they're casting on the bank that we're gonna go and stand on. 
So a lot of times guys aren't catching because they're not reading that bank. You've got to get out onto that bank. I'm going to walk probably about 200 meters out. And that's that bank right there. It's just right in front of me. Probably about another 100 meters. And all you do is you just wait for that little lull where the waves will just calm down a bit and you can walk right out there and the tide's still dropping so as that tide drops we're going to be able to get closer and closer to that bank with, with not too much problems it's hard when the swell's up give it a good cast it's gone about 100 100 meters and I know I know I'm out and behind that bank so I'm fishing in that channel and like I was saying if I was casting way back where the camera is I'd be casting basically to where I am now and it's only knee deep on a bank you're pretty much wasting your time you got to get out onto that bank and then once you make it you're fishing in that channel and you're just about guaranteed to fish hooked up guys I'm not sure if it's come off there's some big waves crashing right on the bank Oh no, I still got it, I still got it. Probably just a car way. But we're actually making it into the little channel and behind the bank, the inner bank. Oh, might be a snapper boys, might be a snapper guys. Yeah boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go little snapper he's probably getting close to 40 centimeters he's not a big fish but he's getting close to that 40 centimeters probably around that 37 38 nice little fish on the kotare off Murawai yeah boy Once you've caught a fish, you know that they're there. And nine times out of ten, they'll bite within two to five minutes of your cast. So what I like to do is basically stand ready. Because you don't want to go through all that. Go through the water, get wet, and miss your fish. So rather than walking back and putting it in the rod holder I'm going to stand ready wait for that bite so I've got bites already that's what I was saying stand ready you know the fish are there you've made it all the way to the bank <laughs> that's what I was saying you know the fish are there You've made it to the bank. Hold on to the rod. Get ready. You don't want to miss the fish. Hopefully it's another snapper. See how far I've got to walk back to the camera. It's been about 150 meters. You just take your time, no need to rush, you've got all the breakers against you, pull of the rip, you don't want to pull that hook from the fish. So just take your time, there's no need to panic. If we're lucky, might be another snapper, it's coming in on the waves. Just bring him up on this wave. Looks like a car wire, this one.
there you go. This is the car white. Pretty much a fish that you'll always catch out on the west coast. Hey guys, back out on the sand with Pierre today. Thought I'd bring the uh, new Okuma reel for another blast. So um, as you can probably see, got the little boat here. Come into a little sandbar. Thought we'd come for a bit of a surf cast off one of the sandbars for a couple of hours. It's quite nice um, using it the other day. Got some real nice distance and stuff. So yeah, I thought I'd um, grab here and come out to one of the sandbars and give it another blast so if we get some fish from here I only got a couple the other time when I was using it so I thought we'd come out and uh, have another shot so hopefully uh, me and Pierre can get into a few fish So I'm just going to run that usual trace, the one that I make. Got a five ounce breakaway, about a meter and a half long. And like I was saying last time, running that, that actual loop, and I've cut it at one end. So it gives a little bit of a trace there. Seven bar row, little bead. Okay, first bait, half pulley. What I'm gonna do is there's very little current here. It does pick up sometimes, so I'm still gonna use my breakaway, but I'm not gonna set my wires. It's about four meters out in front of us and that'll just get shallower and shallower as the tide goes out probably drops down to about maybe three and a half meters not fishing in a hole or anything it's just basically where the sandbar goes down So yeah, this uh, new reel's quite nice actually. Oh, a couple of little nibbles here already. Feels like a snapper, Pierre. Feels like a snapper. Oh, yeah, boy. <laughs> I 
Bit of a snap rooney pier. Oh, Pierre, it's a snapper Rooney. Oh, Pierre just dropped one too. Oh, yeah, boys. Bit of a nice sepia. How's that, guys? <laughs> That's a stonker of a fish. He's close to 60 centimetres, Pierre. He's close to 60 centimetres. Pierre's hooked up too. Oh, Pierre's on, Pierre's on too. Snapper. <laughs> Oh, look at the tail up here. The tail's coming out. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's still a goodie. Yeah. Not a bad fish. He's about 40 centimeters. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that, guys. He's not a bad fish. Not a bad fish. He's all lit up. Oh, look at this, Pierre. Oh, it's a nice fish. Oh, Gonna try and let him go. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Leave for another day. Go the other way. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, boy. Oh. Oh, yeah, boy. Oh. That's the one great thing about the little boat. Tails out of the... Oh, I'm on, I'm on. <laughs>